Hi, my name is Vincent and today I want to take a look at finding limits of trigonometric functions. So we have the problem, find the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of 8x divided by sine of 3x. So now with any limit problem, it's always a good idea to try to evaluate it by substitution. But the problem with substituting x equals 0 is if we substitute x equals 0 into this expression here, we wind up with the fraction 0 divided by 0 which is an indeterminate form for finding limits. So this tells us that we need to use other techniques to find the limit of this expression here. So what we want to do is make use of this identity for tangent, where we have tangent of theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. We're going to apply this identity to this problem here. So we're going to rewrite the next line. We'll call this line 1. So for line 2, we have the limit as x approaches 0. And now we're looking at Instead of tangent of 8x, we're going to substitute sine of 8x divided by cosine of 8x. And now for this last piece here, the sine 3x in the denominator, we can just write times 1 over sine 3x. So all we did was separate this fraction into two fractions, and then we substituted for tangent of 8x as sine 8x divided by cosine 8x. So now for the next line here, we want to make use of this limit. The limit as theta approaches 0 of sine theta divided by theta equals, well, we won't worry about the fact that this equals 1, but we want to generate the form sine theta divided by theta. So since we have a sine 8x and a sine 3x, we would like to divide both of these expressions by x. So what we want to do is we're going to multiply the numerator of this fraction by 1 over x, or I should say the numerator of this entire problem by 1 over x, and we're going to multiply the, the entire denominator by 1 over x as well. So what this accomplishes for line 3, we have the limit as x approaches 0, and now we're looking at, since multiplication is commutative, let's choose to multiply sine 8x and 1 over x. When we multiply sine 8x and 1 over x, we get sine 8x over x. And now, for the denominator of this fraction, we're just going to rewrite cosine of 8x. So we're going to choose to multiply sine 3x times 1 over x in the denominator of this problem. So we have times, and now, let's keep in mind, since we multiplied sine 8x and 1 over x, all we have to rewrite here is 1. So we have 1 over, and now we have sine 3x times 1 over x is sine 3x over x. So now this problem looks good so far, and it may be tempting to say, oh, we can evaluate this because we have sine 8x over x. But it's important to note that with this limit here, notice how there's a theta both in the numerator, I'm sorry, the theta is both in the sine function and the numerator, and in the denominator of the fraction as well. So what this tells us is that for this expression here, we need this to say sine 8x divided by 8x, and we need this piece here to say sine 3x divided by 3x. So one way we can accomplish that is by multiplying this fraction here by 8 divided by 8. And now what that does is, it's going to give us the 8x in the denominator that we need. We'll worry about this 8 in the numerator later on, but for now, we've accomplished creating an 8x in the denominator. For this piece here, we want this denominator to say 3x. So what we're going to do is multiply this whole fraction by 1 over 3. Because notice how when we have 3 times x, that gives us the 3x that we need. But now in order to preserve the equality of this expression, since we multiplied the denominator by 1 third, we need to multiply the numerator of this fraction by 1 third as well. So now for the next line, we want to focus on two particular constant values. We want to focus on this 8 here, and we want to focus on this 1 third. Because there's a property of limits that allows us to extract constant terms. So the terms that we don't need, we want to extract out. So for the next line, we're going to have, so we have for line 4, we're looking at the limit as x approaches 0, and now we're going to bring this 8 outside of the limit using that property of limits where we could extract constant terms. So we have 8, 
And now when we bring out this one-third, that's going to give us 8 times one-third, which is 8 divided by 3. So that's what happens when we bring out 8 and one-third. They're going to multiply together and give us 8 over 3. So now we're just going to rewrite everything that's left inside. So we have, we have sine 8x divided by, and now there's an 8 times x in the denominator of this fraction, so sine 8x over 8x over, and now there's a cosine of 8x. And now this is being multiplied by, we brought this one third out, so all that's left in the numerator of this fraction is 1, so we have 1 over, and now we have sine 3x times 1 is sine 3x divided by, and now we have 3 times x is 3x. So now we're ready to solve this problem. We can make use of the properties or the limits that we have here. So for line 5, we have 8 thirds times the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 8x divided by 8x is equal to 1 using this limit that we have here. So we have times 1, and now the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of 8x is equal to, well, all we need to do now, we could use that technique of doing the direct substitution. So when we substitute x equals 0, we have cosine of 8 times 0, which is cosine of 0, and the cosine of 0 equals 1. So this gives us 1 over 1. And what I used here was the, uh, the division property for limits, where when we're finding the limit of the quotient of two functions, we need to find the limit of the function in the numerator and find the limit of the quotient in the denominator and then we could just divide those two limits and that's sufficient. So now for the last piece we have times 1 over and now the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 3x once again we're using this limit here so we could evaluate this limit and say that it's equal to 1. So for the last line now we can solve this problem we have for line 6 the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent of 8x divided by sine of 3x is equal to 8 thirds times 1 times 1, which is just 8 thirds. So for, just uh, to wrap things up, we want to make use of trigonometric identities when we're solving, when we're trying to find limits of trigonometric functions. And this limit here is probably one of the most important limits to keep in mind when you're finding the limit of a trigonometric function. So just remember those two for solving problems of this type. Okay, well this is going to conclude this video on finding limits of trigonometric functions. Thank you all for watching and I hope that this was helpful.